What is his dad right there? Dad. <laughs> oh my god, man. I cannot believe this. Hey y'all, once again, this is a Maxwell bringing you another unearthly experience that I had growing up. I hope everyone is doing okay and they're having a great day, week, and month. As you may know, Thanksgiving is coming up. So I hope you guys eat a lot of turkey. Lots of gravy. I know I am. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you guys like what I'm doing, please don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss what I'm coming up with. And share this video with folks in your network if you know anybody that would like it. Um, I mean, if you hit that smash button and that's all you do, then that is awesome of you because that helps spread the word of what I'm doing. And I have a lot of things coming up that I like to do. And, uh, you know, so I appreciate the love. Um, I don't have anything really crazy as far as news coming up. So I uh, appreciate you guys sticking around um, and just continuing to listen to my experiences. As expected, let's go ahead and get on with this experience. Now my experience comes in around early 2000. I think I was like a uh, pretty young buck. Still kind of am, but you know, um, definitely just starting life, if you may say. It's probably like around maybe 21, 20? Maybe 22. I know it was around there. And just to start by giving you guys a little backstory. I'd met a girl. Uh, back then, you know, early 2000, the internet was just starting to get really good with chatting and meeting people across the United States and, you know, what have you. And so I guess that was the online thing to do, right? <laughs> was just like start meeting people and stuff who have your similar I don't know interests hobbies whatnot and so I met this girl um, and we've been talking for a while and then we were starting to have like feelings for each other um, and you know we decided that we wanted to meet up and we wanted to see uh, where things would go with that. And at the time, I also knew a good friend who lived in Tennessee. Oh, and I thought I'd mention that. Yeah, she lived in Tennessee at the time. I lived in Florida. And then we were, you know, we started talking online and, and catching feelings, if, if you know what I mean. And so at the time, I also knew a good friend who lived in Tennessee. And he would tell me every now and then, like, hey, why don't you come out? You know, it's just me and my wife. We're chilling. Come out, come out, come out. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, we're pretty good friends. And so I kind of put two and two together. And so I thought that was a good time to pay him a visit. So once I arrived in Tennessee, you know, um, that friend of mine picked me up I think that's what we did honestly like I don't know if I arrived or if I just like arrived on a plane and then he picked me up I, I think that's what <laughs> happened gosh it's so long ago um, and that part of the trip was a blur to me Ugh, I know um, so but anyway he picked me up and he lived on the outskirts of Nashville a uh, little town called Lebanon. Lebanon. <laughs> it's really pronounced Lebanon, but people in Tennessee will say stuff like Lebanon. There's also streets out there like Murfreesboro. 
they wouldn't really <laughs> they wouldn't really um say Murfreesboro. It's just like uh Murfreesboro, Lebanon. Anyway, fun time. Um so he brought me to his house. Um he lived like 20 minutes outside of Nashville. So this place was very small. Uh, like a small town. I know it was growing, but at the time it was pretty small to me. And we arrived at his house. He lived in a trailer out there in sort of like the woods, kind of like the open, the open, you know, like uh, woods. And at the time, you know, it was very comfortable. It was a very cozy place. Um,. And, you know, if you guys could picture this place, I mean, during the day, springtime, I mean, looking over his six acres and his, you know, on his trailer home, I mean, it was just, it was breathtaking. It was like the best thing uh, for a guy like me who is like from a rather big city. Um, so, you know, I really got the chance to really be surrounded by nature. So at that time it was great. I loved it. I loved taking in that just that beautiful, you know, uh, just countryside of things, and absolutely soaked it in. Um, so where things start to get kind of interesting is during the night. And even though I was grateful that my friend let me stay over his house. Um, there was weird things that were happening out there in the night in the countryside of Lebanon. As it started to get dark outside, I remember we talked about, you know, the guest bedroom that he had, and that's where I would sleep, and, you know, then I would venture on and, you know, meet this girl that I was going out there to to, you know, get to know. So, I had to go out and get some stuff that I had brought in for the trip from his car. And I remember that it was pitch black out there. Um, you know, for the exception of maybe a front light and a side light that he had on his trailer home, which, you know, were sufficient for maybe, I don't know, three or four feet out. Uh, which was fine for that, but uh, once you get out to the car, which was about maybe 10 to 20 feet out, started, you know, it was always just pitch black out there. Just, you couldn't see a damn thing out there. <laughs> it was just so dark. And I remember as I went, and every, and, and every time I would go outside at nighttime, I had this, you know, I had this feeling of, like, insecurity. Um, I had this feeling of, you know, drear, you know, like, dreariness, you know? Like, something was watching me, or something just wasn't right. Something was off. And there was like, you know, this sense of urgency that I had just to get my stuff and come back in the house. Um, I never felt so rushed to go out and come back in <laughs> somewhere. I remember that feeling very, very clearly. Um, so once I got inside, you know, I decided I could brush this off. You know, it's not a big deal. Um, I never really thought any more of it, to be honest with you. Um, so I started getting ready finally for bed. Uh, everybody's saying their good nights, you know, him and his wife, and say, hey man, we'll see you in the morning. All right, cool. So went back to the, uh, the bedroom and, uh, you know, it just, it, it just felt very uneasy. Um... Uh, once it started to get like dark and you know you're, you're, you're laying down your bed and you know 
and you turn off the lights, it's, you know, that's it, right? There's, there's nothing for you to see anymore. It's just pitch black. And I remember that I was sleeping in front of this uh, window that I had in that bedroom. And at the time, I don't think it had any drapes, any window drapes. Uh, and it just made me feel just uh, really uneasy. Uh, I just remember thinking, you know, I shouldn't feel this way, right? I mean, I uh, should be excited. I should be thinking about this person that I'm going to go see. Um, so I, you know, I should have had like butterflies in my stomach, but that night I just, it was a completely different, uh, feeling that I had just, uh, very uneasy, very unsettled, almost like I, almost like a fearful feeling. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, you know, I really didn't get no sleep. Um... I try not to think about it, you know, but it was hard. Um, I remember at some point during the night, you know, your body just kind of tells you, okay, it's time to go to sleep. So I finally fell asleep, but woke up a couple times during the night. And on one of those times, I remember hearing strange noises outside, like rustling, like something was moving out there. And I thought, you know, I'm off the grid right now. I'm like 20 minutes away from the city. So, you know, maybe it's a deer, maybe it's squirrels, you know, and thinking about, you know, the logical or the, you know, the reality that it could be something that we all know just kind of gave me comfort. It was just like, it's not a big deal. Um, so suddenly, out of nowhere, and and before I say this, it's like I don't know if you've ever slept in a trailer home or if you've ever had a trailer home in your life. I don't know. I've been, I've been, I've visited a couple. You know, this was obviously one of the nicest ones where it's really nice and furnished. You know, um, they've got everything that a home could want um, and some. But one thing that sets a trailer home apart um, from a home, in my opinion, is that a trailer home it's very easy to hear things outside probably because of the type of material they use it's a lot thinner you know and uh, you know it's just easier to hear things so when it's pitch black and it's dead silent you know you can pick up I mean the cat that's outside you can pick up the dog that's barking. You feel like it's right there, right? So my senses were hyped up when I heard um, a loud, heavy, just thing or whatever it was running straight up one side of the wall of the house which was the opposite wall of where I was sleeping. And I could hear that. Even though the house was shaped re rectangularly, it was a very long stretch of a home. It, at least that's what I thought, you know? I mean, like it wasn't like, you know, huge, but it was a comfortable trailer that, you know, had a nice stretch. And so I heard this thing just, I mean, you know, just go up the opposite side of that wall where I was sleeping. And then in a matter of seconds, ran across the roof and down the other side of the wall, the house that was where I was sleeping. Um, and I remember there's a, 
bathroom and then there's a room uh, right next to the bed where I was sleeping in. So this thing, whatever it was, you know, it, I mean, it is zipped, you know, vertically across this house or this trailer so fast that when it was finished, I I thought to myself, there, there's no way that a squirrel can run that fast. I've seen squirrels just book it. I've seen them. But you know how squirrels jump. You can tell that squirrels kind of hop, and you will hear that hop. Um when you, if they were to be on top of a roof. I thought about a cat, and cats also have like a leap, you know? So I thought about all this, but this, what was different about this is that it had no leap, it had no hop to it. It was just, I mean, as fast as you can think I mean, it went up one wall, over the roof, and down the next wall. And it was just in a matter of seconds. I'm talking about maybe three seconds. And it, it made this loud, scratchy noise with its claws as it ran. And never once did I hear it hop or did I hear it leap. It just, the whole time, its claws were just scratching the whole wall and roof and the other wall of the house. It was eerily strange. I remember that night like it was yesterday and all my senses were hyped up. And I don't know, I went through animal through animal in my mind that could have done that. And it would seem strange for any bird to do that. You know, could it be possible? I mean, I'm sure it could. But let me tell you something. I could not sleep that night. And at one point, I did obviously sleep. But at one point, my body just gave in. I was just so tired of being awake that I just gave in. And this thing was so loud. In the morning that follows, I asked my friend. I said, hey, man. Did you hear any weird noises outside the house? Like anything crazy happen? And you know, he might have been just a, a really like heavy sleeper. And he said, nope, I didn't hear anything. So, you know, I don't know what it could have been. I don't know what could have done the type of running pattern that I heard. Till this day, I still remember it. And also, stay tuned for the continuation of this. Because this was just one night experience. I have a crazy experience that I want to tell you guys. Um, but that would be for my next episode. So, what do you guys think it was? Do you think um, that it was something abnormal? That can't be explained? Do you know what it might have been? If you do, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Uh, once again, guys, thank you for listening to Maxwell's Unearthly. This was my experience that I had back in the day. And once again, don't forget to like, you know, share, subscribe, and do everything that you can to hook me up. I appreciate you guys' time, and you guys have a wonderful day day.